One of the smaller changes in Hibernate 6 that can get easily overlooked and which Steve Ebersol presented in a recent expert session in the Persistence Hub is the introduction of the mutation query and selection query interfaces. It allows the separation between queries that change data and the ones that select it from the database. Older Hibernate versions and the JPA specifications use the query interface to handle both types of queries. It extends the selection query and mutation query interface, and you can of course still use that interface with Hibernate 6. But the two new interfaces are much cleaner because each only defines the methods you can use with the corresponding type of query. And as I will show you in this video, it also enables a stricter validation of a provided statement. Hi, I'm Tom Janssen. If you want to build incredible efficient persistence layers with Hibernate and Spring Data JPA, please subscribe and click the bell to get new videos every week. And also don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful. Before we take a closer look at the two new interfaces, I want to quickly show you how to get a Hibernate session if you are using Hibernate as your JPA implementation. In that case, you often inject an Entity Manager instance and not Hibernate's proprietary session. You can get the underlying session by calling the unwrap method. After you get a session instance, getting Hibernate's selection query interface is quite simple. You can call the create selection query method with a jpqa query string or a criteria query object. Or you can also call the create named selection query method with the name of a named query. One of the advantages of the selection query interface is the improved validation. When Hibernate instantiates the selection query, it immediately validates the query statement. If you provided a modifying instead of a select statement, Hibernate throws an illegal select query exception. Another advantage of the selection query interface is the much cleaner interface. It only provides the methods to configure and execute a query that selects data, but no methods specific to update operations, like the execute update method. You can find all method definitions in the Java doc. A few examples are the getResultList and getResultStream methods to get a query result containing multiple records. The getSingleResult method to get a query result that has precisely one record. Different versions of the setParameter method to set the value of a bind parameter used in your query. The setFirstResult and setMaxResult methods to define pagination. The setHint method to provide a query hint and various methods to configure the cache handling. There are much fewer things you can define for modifying queries, and that's why the mutation query interface benefits the most from the separation. The mutation query interface is much cleaner and easier to use than the query interface by excluding all selection specific methods. It only defines the execute update method to execute the modifying query, multiple versions of the set parameter method to provide bind parameter values. Two methods to define the JPA and the Hibernate specific flush mode, and a method to set a query timeout, a query comment, and a query hint. You can instantiate a mutation query in a similar way as the selection query. If you want to use a JPQL or criteria statement, you have to call the create mutation query method on Hibernate session interface and provide a string with your JPQA statement or criteria update or criteria delete object. If you define a named query for your statement, you can instantiate it by calling the create named mutation query method with the name of your named query. By calling the create native mutation query, you can also instantiate a mutation query interface using a native SQL statement. In all three cases, Hibernate returns an instance of the same mutation query interface which you can then use to configure and execute your modifying statement. Like the selection query interface, Hibernate validates the provided statement when you instantiate a mutation query. If your provided statement selects data instead of modifying it, Hibernate throws an illegal mutation query exception. As you can see in the log output, the exception message clearly describes the problem. Hibernate 6 brings a bunch of changes. The selection query and mutation query interfaces 
are some of the smaller ones. They provide a much cleaner API than the often used query interface because they focus on a specific type of operation. The selection query interface defines the methods required to create, configure, and execute a query that selects data from the database. The mutation query interface does the same for update and delete statements. Designing an interface for a specific type of operation enabled removing all the unnecessary methods and the design of much cleaner interfaces. Okay, that's it for today. If you want to learn more about Hibernate and JPA, you should join the Persistence Hub. It gives you access to all my video courses, including one about Hibernate performance tuning, two monthly Q&A courts, monthly coding challenges, a community of like-minded developers, and regular expert sessions. And if you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe below. Bye.